Welcome back, fellow time travelers. Today we'll be working on something that will take us across 40 years of media compatibility, starting from the early days of PC-DOS and the Commodore 64, all the way up to modern memory cards in a project I'm calling Commander Data. We'll start with this 5-bay beige ATX case, which we're going to stuff to the brim with drives. At the core of this system will be this ECS K7S5A, running an AMD Athlon XP1600 processor clocked at 1.4 GHz. I picked it because it's a full-size board that supports both Windows 98 and XP, and has integrated audio and Ethernet. All in all, it's pretty full-featured. We'll be running that with two 512 megs of DDR400, the maximum that Windows 98 will work with out of the box without having issues and, honestly, plenty for what we're going to be doing. Graphics will be handled by this ATI Radeon 9200. It's a 128 meg AGP card that has decent performance, is passively cooled, and has a plethora of output options. I opted to go with a proper spinning drive for this build, and this 250GB Western Digital IDE drive will provide ample space for the dual operating systems I intend to install. For media support, let's start off with a 3.5 inch floppy, as well as a DVD slash CD burner. And for more exotic taste, this 100 megabyte zip drive. I have an external parallel and SCSI drive that support a wide range of older PCs and Macs, which should make moving data between them a snap. Finally, I have this new old stock 5 quarter drive that allow us to write disks for even the earliest of DOS computers. Powering it all will be this Antec 380 watt ATX power supply, with plenty of Molex connectors to connect all the components up. I do have some more stuff on the way, but the main players are here, so let's get it together. Unfortunately, I didn't notice before I started the build that the new 5 quarter drive isn't keyed, and my cable is, so it won't fit. Luckily, I have another project machine I'm working on that had a drive that is keyed, with a cable that isn't, so I'll just swap the two. And it's alive! Now, we just need to get the operating systems onto it. Since the F-Disk utility in Windows 98 doesn't like big drives, I started by booting off the Windows XP CD and used the tools in there to divide the drive up to a 40 gig partition for Windows 98, with the remainder being allocated to Windows XP. Then it was on to installing Windows 98 Second Edition, and after that, it was time to install Windows XP Service Pack 3. I decided to dual boot them because I have some disk tools from the past that work better on Windows 98, and I like the optical support in Windows XP better, so now I can have the best of both worlds. The boot menu is only calling our Windows 98 install Windows, so let's edit the boot config in Windows XP and rename it appropriately. Now 
There we go. That looks a lot better. While Windows XP recognized the Radeon 9200 out of the box, Windows 98 needed a little more coaxing. Shortly after finishing installing the drivers, the card reader I had ordered to fill up that last slot of the case showed up, which also gives us a USB port on the front of the machine. While we're at it, let's add this Belkin USB 2.0 card, since the included ports are only USB 1.1. Unfortunately, after installing the card, the machine didn't feel like booting anymore. But after moving the card to a different PCI slot, we're back in the game. And would you look at all those drive letters. From the early days of IBM PCs to modern SD cards and USB drives, this machine can talk to them all. Of course, there's one more format I wanted to add support for, and that's the Commodore 64. Using this adapter that allows you to connect an original Commodore disk drive to the parallel port, and some specialized software that can communicate with it, I can now back up disks that I have, and write disk images onto floppies that can be used on the Commodore 64 directly. While I didn't build this machine for gaming, the Radeon 9200 is no slouch in that department. It handles Need for Speed Hot Pursuit with all the graphics settings turned up to high under Windows XP, and then drops down to Windows 98 to fire up some Star Trek Armada. And I'll bet you thought I wasn't going to fit a Star Trek game into this episode. This project came about as I was working on a computer for an upcoming video, and I spent way too much time fooling around with other solutions just trying to write a boot disk for it. And while many of my machines end up in storage between projects, Commander Data will be hooked up permanently, ready to perform transfers at a moment's notice. Thanks for checking out this video. If retro computers are your thing, then subscribe and click the bell to keep up with all my future time traveling exploits. And thanks to all my awesome Patreon supporters on the screen now who make videos like this possible. I'll see you again in the next one.